Why are you knocking on me bleeding door? I'm right here, you tough bugger. Oh, apologies. Adventure Cape Saw the thrill of great and small Adventure Cape Adventure Games He loves them all Every day is a new quest Exploring north, south, east to west Point and click to find The answers that we seek Adventure Cape Hello there, fellow Barrow Diggers! The excavation of Hobbs Barrow is the latest offering from Cloak & Dagger Games. These shady looking fellows, Sean Aitchison and John Inch, who I've been a fan of ever since their first game, Mudlarks. They've come a long way since then and now they're coming out of the shadows. The cloaks are off and the daggers are out, and this time they also have the publishing prowess of Wadjali Games behind them. Who, among other things, added voice acting to the mix, which really elevates the experience to a new level. I were born in this very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. I already knew this was going to be something special after playtesting the game, when it was originally called Incantamentum. If you'd like to know the real reason why the name was changed, watch this interview with Dave Gilbert by Cressup. Link in the description below. What's wrong with the name Incantamentum anyway? Try saying that ten times fast. Incantamentum, 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 Incantamentum. It still survives as one of the chapter titles, which all have Latin names such as Adventus and Expiscor. We play as Thomasina Bateman, who's named after a real life barrow digger called Thomas Bateman aka the Barrow Knight, who excavated the real Hobbs Barrow in the 1850s. He's featured in this book, The Early Barrow Diggers by Barry M. Marsden, which was a source of reference for the game. Thomasina travels by train to the remote village of Bewley, where she's supposed to meet a Mr. Leonard Shoulder who wrote to her about excavating a local barrow. An excavation? How very delightful. So what is a barrow exactly? Let's find out from Miss Bateman, our very own Barrow Knight. Barrow is another word for tumulus, or tumuli in the plural. A profoundly interesting subject. You've lost me. I excavate ancient burial sites, looking for relics. Oh, I? You're a grave robber. In the commentary, Sean Aitchison explains how the inspiration for the game came about when his friend was going to visit a place called Hobhurst House, a burial mound near the village of Beely in Derbyshire. There's a legend of a goblin living in the mound or the nearby woods, though as far as I know there's no evidence this goblin actually exists, and Sean's friend never went on the trip after all. Well, I decided to take that trip with a friend of mine and see if this legend was true. Before venturing onto the moors, we stopped at the Devonshire Arms pub, which looks exactly like the plough and furrow in the game. We enjoyed a hearty meal along with a fine cheese selection, including a goat's cheese that's made in South Cumbria with milk from a small herd of 200 goats. Now that's a lot of goats. After that, we ventured forth in search of Hobhurst House, which didn't turn out very well, as you'll see in a separate video. Holy shit. You have got to be, you got, you got to be shitting me. When Thomasina first arrives at the plow and furrow, she meets a drunk guy who asks her for a kiss. So, give us a kiss now, won't ya? We can either play along or imagine he's Chris Rock and go all Will Smith on him. How dare you! <laughs> Wench! For anyone who is wondering, we did that slap animation before Will Smith made it a thing. Just saying. There are several times where we have to make a decision like this, or choosing whether to lie or tell the truth. As far as I know though, this doesn't have a real impact on the story other than some alternate lines of dialogue. I'd have liked to see some branching story paths or alternate endings, though I can't complain too much or I might meet these guys in a dark alley somewhere and mysteriously disappear from YouTube. On our first night at the inn, it feels like something is not quite right here, and we wake up in the night to an unexpected visitor.
My cat wakes me up in the same way. The strangeness continues the next day when we meet the vicar in the forest and it looks like he's been possessed, but he really just needs to vomit. right through his own vomit. We help him to recover by performing some good old fashioned bloodletting, for which we get an achievement, the Bloodletter. Sounds like a good name for a horror movie. Speaking of which, I recently played Nightmare Frames and highly recommend it if you're feeling brave enough to go in search of the scariest horror movie ever made. Anyway, Thomasina's not having much luck in her search for the elusive Leonard Shoulder. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No. Are you sure? Yes. Maybe this kid knows what we're looking for. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? No. <laughs> Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? No. Goodbye. <laughs> that, that was the greatest conversation ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, do we ever find Mr. Shoulder? Well, I really shouldn't say. It's kind of a spoiler. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna tell you anyway. If you really don't want to know, skip to this time code. I love how, after all the time we spend looking for him, Leonard Shoulder shows up casually sitting on a bench. I was also surprised to learn that Tae He Chai, the voice of Leonard Shoulder, isn't really an old man. How oh, marvelous! It's me, Leonard Shoulder. Please take a seat, Miss Bateman. We have much to discuss. This bench is called Margaret's Lookout, which has special significance as we learn that Margaret is the mother of Arthur Tillett, the drunk guy we slapped when we first arrived. He tells us the story of how she passed away and he had the bench put there in her memory. This makes Arthur Tillett a much more sympathetic character than just a random drunk, and we can think of Margaret whenever we sit on the bench and watch the world go by. We now return to the spoiler-free zone. The time we spend looking for Leonard's shoulder is the perfect way to meet the locals and get to know our surroundings, which feels like it has a life of its own and changes over time. The plow and furrow is the center of activity, and guests come and go like this guy playing a game of pin finger like Bishop in Aliens. Do it, Bishop. Hey, not me, man. <laughs> yeah, you. Hey, come on, quit messing around. Don't come move. On. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Then this guy, who looks like Benedict Cumberbatch, shows up, and he brings his horse with him. How do we know where the horse is? Just follow the horse shit. Fresh and steamy. Delightful. I believe a horse to be the culprit. When I playtested the game, one of my notes was that every time you walk through this alley, you're standing in shit. The developers obviously thought this was pretty shitty and moved the shit off to the side. You could say they get shit done. This guy isn't Benedict Cumberbatch after all, he's actually the game's musician David Kane, aka The Machine the Demon, who composed the soundtrack every barrow digger should listen to while excavating. He also performs a song at the end of the second day. This mirrors the end of the first day when Thomasina gets drunk and sings a barrow digging song her father used to sing. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. This is a real song of the first barrow digger, and you might get to hear me sing it in the search for Hobhurst House. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull, in casting out the uh, take care. Huzzah! I found a skull! Every so often, a close-up of Thomasina's eyes transports us to a flashback scene, 
that explains more of her backstory growing up and learning the joys of barrow digging from her father. He also teaches her to believe in facts rather than fantasy. If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. What is it? Uh, hogwash? Hogwash. This is one of Thomasina's favorite words. Another one being... Curses. 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 Every night there's a dream sequence where we meet the infamous goblin, who reminds me of Gollum. What did you say? It's anyone's guess who this creature really is, but the close-up looks a lot like the one of the cat. And in Adventure X, John Inch was wearing a cap with a half-goblin, half-cat symbol. What does this mean? That the goblin and the cat are somehow the same thing? Hogwash! As Thomasina gets closer to her goal of excavating the barrow, there's an inescapable feeling that something dark is brooding beneath the surface of this ostensibly quiet village. Every pixel oozes atmosphere and adds to the ambience, right down to the sheep in the background. Okay, let's all stop adventuring for a minute and take a moment to appreciate those sheep in the distance. It's not easy to convey life with sprites that are three pixels high. Did I succeed, people? I was so pleased with this result, I went and opened a pack of bourbon biscuits at 1am to celebrate its completion. Scandalous. Scandalous. The character animations are also meticulously designed. For example, the way this girl jumps up in excitement at getting her doll back or juggling apples at the village market. The apples play a part in one of the puzzles, which felt organic and didn't hinder gameplay or distract me from the story. One of the puzzles involves old Cyril, who looks like a dirty old man when we first see him fidgeting away in a dark corner of the pub. He's actually one of my favorite characters, and he's not too fond of the train bringing outsiders into Bewley. You're not local. You've come on that bloody train, haven't you? Bewley's going to dogs. There are some genuinely touching moments like this scene with Mrs. De Plancy standing by the grave of her late husband. It's just quiet at home now. Silence. The funny thing is, that's what he always craved. Peace and quiet. Mrs. De Plancy has an important part to play as she is the supplier of her famous Bakewell puddings, that believe it or not are necessary in order to enter the barrow. So if you ever go barrow digging, don't forget to bring some Bakewell puddings with you. I could go into more detail about all the reasons I love this game, but here are just five examples. One, when you stay on the menu screen for long enough, this happens. Two, picking up a hand and showing it to the vicar who's not amused. Care to hold one, Father Roach? Put that thing down, would you? You're no fun. Three, this lady inexplicably sweeping the dirt. I'll let her get on with her sweeping, though what exactly she is sweeping up remains something of a mystery. Four, the Tonbert Hop. If there are any fans of Nathan Hanley's guard duty plane, then the stream hop Thomasina animation is for you. I love little touches like that in games, so I'm afraid to say we shamelessly stole this one. <laughs> I mean, I'll rephrase that. It's merely a homage to a classic modern adventure gem. Please play it. Hey. Uh, yeah. Five, having the honor of being toasted by Lord Panswick. Everyone, raise your glasses to Miss Bateman. May she conquer Hobbs Barrow and find all that she desires. Hip hip! Hooray! Scandalous. I'm not going to reveal what's in Hobbs Barrow. Instead, I'd like to talk about one of the things I learned from reading this book. After excavating a barrow, Thomas Bateman would leave a tablet in there, saying, Unless some future barrow knight a cutting here should make in, and search in vain from morn till night for what we've just now taken, a leaden label we enclose in pity to such late man, where one and all may read who choose 
inscribed the name T. Bateman. In other words, tough shit, I got here first, suckers! So what are the Hobbs Barrow boys up to next? Well, in my interview with them, they said they're going to take a rest until next year, and then who knows? Personally, I'd love it if they did a spin-off game featuring this kid, voiced by Natalie Winter, who grows up to fight the Lambton Worm. That's a great sword technique you have. Thanks, miss. Mr. Crozier's gonna make me a real one when I turn 12. I'm preparing myself to fight the Lambton Worm. I'm preparing myself to fight the Lambton Worm. I'll keep training. You will all thank me when I thrust my sword deep into its fat belly. Ha! I'll keep training. You will all thank me when I thrust my sword deep into its fat belly. Douglas, this lady doesn't want to hear your nonsense. Nonsense? The Lambton Worm is real. His name's Kenneth. Hmm. You're coming with me, little fellow. I shall name you Kenneth. Bugger off! Ah, the unmistakable charm of old Cyril. <laughs> 